So hello everyone, welcome back to the second talk of the day. And uh, we have with us Professor Fedor Forman from University of Bergen. And he'll be speaking on tree width. This is the first talk on tree width, so which will serve as an introduction to tree width. Thank you so much, Professor, for offering to give this talk. Over to you now. Yeah. Thank you. I will give two lectures about tree widths. So the first, uh, both lectures are introductory. So the first lecture will be on dynamic programming, how to dynamic programming on graphs of bounded tree widths. And the second lecture will be on uh, abstractions for graphs of having small trivets and then how to use this abstraction, how to exploit these things algorithmically. So there is a very general idea in science, but also in common life, right? When we cannot solve a big problem efficiently when the problem is just too big for us, right? So the natural way to approach to this problem is to split it into small problems, try to solve small problems, and then combine solution together. And uh, in computer science, this paradigm is known as divide and conquer, and also very similar paradigm is dynamic programming. And in graph, algorithms, uh, usually when we try to apply this paradigm, we try to exploit small separators. And what is trivets? Trivets uh, can be seen as a combined way. First of all, it's a very systematic way of uh, decomposing a graph into small separators and then to exploit this decomposition algorithmically. And the second uh, also quite uh, useful property of trivets we know how the obstacles for graphs of small trivets look like. And the combination of these two properties provides us with quite powerful algorithmic tools. And I will just scratch a little bit the surface of this interesting area. So my plan is uh, at the first lecture, I will just uh, will speak how to do dynamic programming. So how to exploit the property that trivets is a composition of small separators. And then I will give algorithm for independent set and we'll discuss a little bit more. And uh, the second lecture tomorrow, I will speak about obstacles for decomposition and then uh, give uh, one example how to apply the results which we learned today together with results which will, uh, with abstractions, how to obtain some kind of algorithms and how this will give us powerful tools for in, al in the algorithm design. And for further reading, so what I will be teaching in these two lectures, everything what I will be speaking is in this chapter seven of the parameterized algorithms book. And uh, there is much more information happening there. And I will also discuss if you are interested, uh, if you're interested in these things, what you should read later, but this will be tomorrow. Okay, just uh, the example, so how things work, right? So we know that uh, many uh, NP-complete problems uh, like independent set, clique, right? Vertex cover, dominating set, they are so, which are NP-complete on general graphs, they are actually solvable in polynomial, very often in linear time on trees. So to show, and to one of the natural approaches uh, how we solve such problems on trees is to do dynamic programming. So just let's look at this uh, fun problem called party problem. So the problem is you want to organize a party. So you invite some colleagues to your party. And then what you want to maximize the success of your party, right? And success of your party is uh, how many invited people are happy there. So, the constraint should be that uh, uh, everything should be having fun. Once again, so you want to invite as many people as possible and you don't want to bring people which will be unhappy at your party. So this is your uh, objective. And uh, since you invite your colleagues, you don't want to have a party or you will not be happy to have your party being together with your professor, for example, right? So this is, you don't want to uh, invite people together with the directed bosses. 
So we model this problem as a problem on a tree. So we have a tree and uh, the nodes of the tree represent people. So every person uh, has a weight and actually because some persons are more funnier than the others, right? So different purpose have different weight of fun. And uh, you just uh, don't want to bring people with their uh, direct bosses, which means that uh, in graph theory language, you just want to find an independent set of maximum weight. So you want to find a set of vertices such that no two vertices from the set are adjacent to each other. And you want to find an independent set of maximum weight. Yes, so here is an example of uh, what you can find. Um, with this example, so here you find, so the uh, maximum independent set is of size 20. Right? Uh, so what kind of algorithm can you, so, uh, can, can you uh, use to find such a maximum weight independent set? Well, for independent set, uh, you, you, you definitely, you, you can try a greedy approach and for, it's quite easy to see that uh, without weights, uh, it will find you independent set. With weights, it uh, could be a bit more tricky. So here I would suggest a natural approach is just to do dynamic programming here. So in this dynamic programming, what we're doing, right? So, you, you, so what's happening in dynamic programming always, right? you find uh, a solution for a large number of small problems, and then you combine the solutions of these small sub problems into solution of a larger problem, and you do it, and you do it, and you do it, and at the end, you solve your problem. So here, so what would be the problems? So let's denote uh, the subtree rooted at vertex V by T of V. Then for this subtree, we identify two Values. First value, a of b, is the weight of the maximum is the maximum weight of an independent set in this tree, and b of v is the maximum weight of an independent set in this tree that does not contain this vertex. Right. So the situation is quite simple. I have a subtree. I have an independent set, and then this independent set is either intersect the uh, it's either contained the root of the tree or it doesn't. Right, and I, uh, depending on that, I can see the two different options. And then, so then uh, my goal is to determine the A of R for the root R. So how I do this, uh, so the method is, uh, if uh, I have children of the vertex V, which are V1, etc., VK, then I use the recurrence relation, right? So the B of V is the sum of A's of the children, right? Because what, that, so what does it say, right? So A is the weight of the maximum independent set and B is the maximum weight independent set which doesn't contain the root vertex, right? So if uh, the independent set doesn't contain the root vertex, then I don't care what's happening with its children, right? I just take the maximum. And when I want to compute A of V, so, uh, I, uh, we, which means that the vertex should not be, so, so uh, there could be a situation that, uh, in the, uh, that, that we belong to the independent set, right? So if, if this happening, then none of the children could contain an independent set in the root of the corresponding subtrees. So then for A of V, I compute this value as the maximum of, 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 of B of V. And uh, this corresponds to the situation when uh, V doesn't belong to the independent set, right? And this uh, corresponds to the situation when V belongs to the independent set. And then I take the best of the options. And these values can be easily implemented, uh, calculated in a linear time in a bottom up function. So I start from the leaves. For the leaves, these values are trivial trivially computed, and then I just do dynamic programming. And then at the top, I look what's happening at the end. So this is uh, the, the the way how I will solve in the maximum weight independent set on a tree. Now, 
the natural thing which we always do in uh, mathematics and in computer science, if we have some idea or some algorithmic idea which works on some object, we are interested what are the limits of this idea? So how far, what kind of, what, what is the most general object uh, for which the same idea can be used? So now I have an idea, dynamic programming, right? And also I have an object, a tree. The natural question is, is it so important that my graph is a tree? Or maybe the same type of ideas could work the same type of algorithms. Maybe they could work on something more general, which still look as a tree. Of course, I cannot go too much, right? Because I know that independent set is NP complete in general. But maybe there is some life between general graphs and trees. Yes, but uh, first we need to understand what does it mean that my graph looks like a tree. So for example, is a cycle, does a cycle look like a tree? I don't know, right? Or uh, this graph uh, which I uh, draw here, is it a tree? Yes, it looks a bit like a tree, right? So it's uh, the, it has a tree shape and there are some separators which are, uh, of small size which are connected in a tree-like fa fashion. Or for example, is this graph, does it look like a tree? May, yeah, this is, um, and uh, for our purposes, uh, probably the best definition would be, well, my graph looks like a tree if my algorithm, dynamic programming, can be applied to this graph. And then maybe just uh, to, to play, so what uh, kind of conditions I want to impose that my graph uh, should look like a tree. For example, uh, I know that a tree doesn't have cycles, right? So I can say, okay, my graph looks like a tree if the number of cycles in this graph is small. So for example, this graph looks like a tree from this perspective, right? It has only two cycles. This graph is extremely bad, right? It's like, um, uh, it has a lot of cycles. Or I can say, but in this graph, so actually if, if, if you look, if I remove just two vertices from this graph, the central vertex and one of the uh, vertices of the big cycles, I will obtain a path. So I can say maybe my graph looks like a tree if I can remove a small number of vertices and turn this graph into a forest. Right? Okay, then uh, this graph is still good, right? Uh, and this is more general property than uh, having a small number of cycles. This graph is also good. This graph becomes still, it still remains quite bad. And this graph also, so here I also have to remove a lot of vertices to obtain a forest. The other definition could be, for example, that bounded size parts of a graph are connected in a tree-like way, right? So then uh, this um, graph is not uh, good, right? Because I have a cycle and it's connected uh, in a tree-like way in, in many ways. So it's, uh, but then uh, this graph become good and this graph become good. So you see, so even uh, the definition, what uh, is a tree-like graph is not intuitive and it's not easier to capture or to come out what is this, right? Let's uh, try to do, to approach uh, this uh, philosophical question, what is a tree-like graph from the algorithmic, from the algorithmic point of view, right? So, so the reason why we were able to do dynamic programming on trees is that uh, actually, so the way our solution in a subtree communicate to the remaining part of the tree was very bounded, right? Because the only thing which we care how, whether the root of the subtree belongs to independent set or not, right? So everything belongs how the sub solution, which we found in the subtree, uh, interact with the root vertex, vertex of the subtree. So let's try to uh, continue with our running example, okay? call it in a more scientific way, call this problem independent set. So we have a graph G, we have an integer K. No, we have a graph G and I just want to find the size of a maximum independent set in this graph. So I, I, will, not speak, I will not speak about the weights. With the weights, it will work more or less the same way. Just weights make uh, the problem a bit more difficult to explain. So it's much easier to go with unweighted independent set. 
Okay, so attempt to formalize uh, what is a separation is uh, the notion of k bounded graph. So a k bounded graph is a graph with n vertices and at most k specified labeled vertices. Right? So these are the labeled vertices um, labeled by k labels. And the, this set of vertices x is called the boundary of the graph. And uh, the point of view, what is this boundary? So view it this way. So my graph G is just a small part of a larger graph. And actually, so this labeled vertices X, they separate graph G from the remaining part of the graph. So then, uh, I want to generalize this party arguments for trees. And then uh, for every set, for every subset of the boundary X, I try to keep the size of the largest independent set such that the intersection of this independent set with X is exactly this set S. And if there's no such independent set, then I put this value as minus infinity. And then I compute uh, uh, for error, uh, for each such set, I compute the value and uh, I compute, so, or in other words, I compute this table of dynamic programming. So for example, in this example, so what, uh, what in this, in this table? So for example, if the intersection of, uh, in what is the maximum, uh, in this example, what is the maximum intersection of an independent set, which doesn't intersect set X at all. Well, it should be four, right? I can take this vertex, this vertex, this vertex, and this vertex, so I have four vertices. So what will be the size of the independent set which uh, contains exactly vertex X1 from this set? Well, it should be three, right? Because if X1 is an independent set, then I exclude this vertex, then I can take this, this, and this, okay, then it's exactly four, yes, so. If I take X2, then uh, the, I, I, I can collect only three vertices, right? Yes, so there, pro there could be a mistake in this table, right? I just didn't check it uh, properly. So if you find any mistake here, please put it in chat, right? Uh, anyone found any mistake? Uh -huh. Chat. Okay. Okay. So this table. Uh, so the, the, the size of the table, just let, let just, I just hide the panel and then, yes. Now it's my better. Okay, so the size of this table, right? So it just uh, corresponds to the number of subsets of the set X. So if the size of the set X is K, then uh, I just keep uh, the value uh, of uh, the maximum independent set, which intersection is exactly this subset. So I have uh, at most two K entries in this table, right? So the size of my table is also of order two power K. And now I start uh, growing my graph, right? So um, again, imagine again this situation, you have a graph, small subgraph G, which is separated by a set X from the remaining graph. And now you just add one more vertex to this graph, right? So you always add, because uh, the set X, it separates the graph G from the remaining graph. So you, when you add a new graph, vertex, you always add a vertex which have a, which could have only neighbors only in the set X, right? So this vertex, so if you add a new vertex XI to the set X, this vertex can have arbitrary many neighbors, uh, arbitrary neighbors in X, but it cannot have neighbors 
inside in the inner part of the graph G because X is a separator, it separates G from the remaining graph. Right. So this is the situation here. So here I'm adding a new vertex X4, right? So I have a larger set X4. And now for this, uh, when I added a new vertex, I need to recompute uh, the table of dynamic programming, right? And uh, so after I introduced the new vertex XI, in, in my example, it was the vertex X4, I recalculate the table in the dynamic programming. So what, what I do, right? So if the vertex XI, it doesn't belong to the separator uh, S, uh, then, uh, yeah, so, sorry, if the vertex XI didn't belong to the set S, so then I just take it's uh, the value of T of S uh, remains the same. And if uh, the uh, vertex XI belongs to S and uh, also some neighbor of xi was also belong to s then it cannot be an independent set anymore so i put infinity and uh, if uh, the vertex xi belongs to s and it has no neighbor in s right then uh, what has happened it means that i just add one more vertex to the independent set then the the value of the independent set is one which i pay for the vertex xi and then plus uh, the value which i already was keeping in the table for the set S minus XI, right? So I'm update the table of the, of the dynamic programming. And because my table contains two to the K, at most two to the K entries, right? So, and every entry I have update in polynomial time. So I just uh, go through all my table in polynomial time, uh, times the size of the table, that's times two power k. So there are some uh, clever tricks how to actually improve this running time. So it will work into to the k times polynomial of k, but uh, I will not discuss it here. But in the, in the book, uh, the, 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 so uh, there are explanations how to do it. Now, uh, so we continue with dynamic programming. So I can grow my graph, but also at some moment, I, I, I still want to keep the separator small. And also what, what can happen, right? So that at some moment I can forget the vertices of separator just because they don't separate uh, anything. Uh, um, they're, they're useless for the separation. So if I remove them, then the separator, uh, then the remaining part of the vertices will still separate graph G from graph H. So what happening in this? So, so in this example, so I have a, uh, I have a set of vertices and then I just uh, for, forget vertex. For example, I forget the vertex X4, right? Because uh, uh, it's adjacent only to the uh, uh, vertices of the separator or only to the vertices in the separator and some vertices inside of the graph, but it has no neighbors outside, right? So I just can forget this vertex. And uh, forgetting means I just, uh, I remove the, uh, it's from the set X and I remove a label from this vertex. I will never come back to this vertex again. And uh, then uh, how I will recompute my table. Uh, th this is easier with the forget case, right? So uh, it just, I uh, again can see the situation whether for the set X, whether the vertex X I belong to S or it didn't belong. And then I take the maximum of these two values. And then again, so the, the running time for, for this for forgetting operation is proportional to the number of uh, entries in the table, which is two power K. So if we are able to go to pass the whole graph starting from one vertex and going, going, going from say like from left to right and always keep the size of the separator of order K and uh, use only uh, introduce and forget operations, then uh, actually, uh, so the graphs which are allows such a passing by a floating separator of size at most k are called the graphs of paths 
at most k. So yes, up to um, constant one. So it's um, yes. And basically, what we what we saw. So if we define a, a, a graph of bounded paths and uh, path decompositions that way, then uh, we just saw that the maximum independent set can be solved in time to power k. Right. Okay, so this is uh, the, actually exactly the idea which I want to generalize and which I want to build my definition of trivials. But immediate, yes, and uh, okay, but before that, uh, just uh, uh, the observation that uh, just uh, we solve independent set in this running time. But actually, if you try to play uh, the same dynamic programming tricks and uh, try to solve uh, other problems, you would be uh, with some work, you'll be able to do dominating set uh, to solve it in three power k times some polynomial of k and n. Uh, for q uh, coloring, finding a color, coloring of a graph in q colors, you can also do it in q to the k time. Max cut can be done. Uh, for all cycle transversal to get it in time three to the k, you have to think a little bit. And if you want to, to compute the Hamiltonian cycle in time two to the big O of k to the n, uh, you need some more. It's possible to do it, but you need some clever ideas. And again, this part I will not discuss here, but if uh, you are happy with the algorithm which runs in time k power k, then this is much easier how to do it. So here, so this is, Possible, but again, so and but uh, how to solve a Hamiltonian cycle on graphs of bounded paths in time to, to the k? That was uh, that, that that's a beautiful and nice story. So and, and uh, yeah, the, if you're interested in the things, please take a look in the book. And many of this type of algorithms, they are actually tight. It's possible to prove up to strong exponential time hypothesis that uh, that's it so this is so there's no no no, no better algorithms for, for, for this type of problems when you parameterize them by the path the problem again so with what i explained to you with this uh, forget and introduce no to think it's perfectly fine but it doesn't fit well to from where I started my lecture, because I started my lecture from an algorithm which uh, solve independent set on trees. But if you take a complete binary tree on n vertices, it's a good exercise to prove that the pathways of this tree is logarithm binary of, well, it's, it's a logarithm of n. Right, so trees in general they don't have small pathways. Right, so I have two approaches, and uh, so far this approaches looks uh, uncomparable. And I and I started this lecture saying I will give you a general understanding how the tree-like graphs look like. So what happening here? For in in order to put together trees and the pathways, I need one more operation, it's called the joint operation. So informally, what is a joint operation? I have two boundary graphs, right? You remember T boundary graph is the graph, you have a specified uh, set of T vertices, which are labeled with T labels. I have one graph and I have the other graph and then uh, the joint operation by gluing them together. Uh, so I take a label one in graph G1, I take label one in graph G2 and I identify the vertices labeled by the same label. I take vertices labeled by two in G1, vertex labeled by two in G2, also combine them. So this is a gluing oper joint operation. Yes, so here is an example of the joint operation. So I, once again, I have two graphs uh, which have exactly uh, the same labels in the boundaries, right? Labels here, x1, x2, x3, and one graph and labels x1, x2, x3 in the other graph. So I take a join of them. I identify this vertices. I obtain a new labeled graph. Now, uh, just uh, if I want to solve again the same independent uh, set problem on 
a join or graph, right? So what I'm doing, imagine uh, I have a, already a computer table for all possible intersection of independent set with a border, with the boundary for graph G1. I have the table for intersection of all uh, in, independent, of maximum independent set uh, with a boundary of a graph G2. And now I want to compute what, what is the maximum independent set in a G1 join G2, which have exactly the same intersection with the boundary of the new graph, right? So, but then, so what is this, right? I take, uh, so every independent set uh, can be combined. I take an uh, independent set in one graph, I take independent set in the other graph, and it should be independent set because the labels of the vertices are the same, right? But, uh, and the only thing what I'm doing here, uh, not nicely, right? I count uh, the same vertices uh, from independent set uh, from, uh, from S twice. So then I, I just, uh, I have to de detract this number and my formula then will be that the, this uh, T of S is the T of, uh, 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 of the left graph, the, the value of the second graph minus the set S which I counted twice. And again, so this is uh, to, to update it, what I have to do, right? I have to go through each of the tables, right? And uh, if I'm doing this in a naive way, that will be, I, uh, I have to go for every pair, for, for, uh, of, of, so, so for every value, value in one table and for every value in one table. So I have to do it for to the key, but again, it's quite easy to do it in two to the key. So this update time. And then uh, we're ready to have a, an informal definition of the trivets. So we can say that the trivets is uh, the minimum boundary size, which I need to construct a graph G starting from empty graph and using introduce, forget, and join operations. And again, uh, it's uh, minus one for some historical reasons. Uh, and this minus, why I'm taking this minus one, it will be clear just from the next slide. And what we saw, we saw that independent set problem can be solved in time two to the K times some polynomial of N. Uh, if construction of a graph G with K, K labels is given as input. Any questions so far? Maybe I will ask a question. Can you hear me? Yes. Ah, okay, good, good. <laughs> At least. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Good. So, uh, okay, then I, I continue. So the canonical definition of decomposition and uh, why, uh, and actually this is, uh, so I gave you, this is already the second definition of 3D composition, which I give, but there are uh, even more definitions of 3D composition and why there are different definitions of uh, trivets and 3D compositions is just because uh, it seems to be, it's a very natural notion, even if it doesn't, when you look at, first time at trivets, it doesn't look to you as something natural. At least to, to me, it, it didn't it never look as a natural thing for the first year of my study of this, uh, of, of trivets. But then uh, actually, it, 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 believe me, it, it's a very natural thing. And uh, uh, every time when you have something which is natural and, and, and very useful, of course, it, uh, researchers in different areas of uh, science uh, invent or find this notion. And uh, so the, the notion of trivets, it was found by Robertson and Seymour in graph minus, but also Arbok Proskorovsky was using, we were using this, it's in 1980s for, for the algorithm generalization of a, um, automata. So, and, uh, but uh, even people in statistics uh, much before Robertson and Seymour and Arbok and Proskorovsky was, were using this. And the, the definitions are different, but uh, they define the same object. So a 3D composition of a graph, Robertson and Seymour canonical definition, uh, 3D composition of a graph is a pair uh, where T is a tree and here uh, uh, is a, a assignment which assigns to every node of a tree, a vertex subset, which is called a back. And this uh, satisfies three axioms of the 3D composition. First of all, every vertex of a graph lives in some back. 
property T1. So the union of all backs is the vertex set of G. The second property is that uh, for every H V W, there is at least one back which contains together V and W. So every H also lives in some back of a three decomposition. And the third property, the connectivity property, is the following. So if I take a look at all backs which contain some vertex of the graph, then all these no backs or nodes of the tree which contain the same vertex, they are connected. So they form a subtree of a graph T. And this is uh, often called the separation property because uh, if you are looking at this, if you, look, if you think a little bit about this property, so this property will imply that if you take any back uh, if you take any back of a 3 d composition and you and you remove from the graph the vertices which are contained in this back, then this removal will separate your graph. Okay, and then uh, the, uh, there are many 3 d compositions of a graph, and the, the simple one is uh, if I just take 3 d composition which consists of uh, just a tree with only one node. And I put all vertices of the graph into this node. So one huge back. This is a 3D composition because it satisfies all three properties. So, the, and, and you can construct a lot of uh, various 3D compositions. The, the useful measure of 3D composition is the width of the 3D composition. And uh, the width of the 3D composition is the, the maximum size of the back minus one. Well, and now it's come, why always this uh, minus one? Because uh, just think about this. What is the triads of a tree? Right? So every edge of a graph should live in some back. Right? So this triads should, so, so if I have a 3D composition of a tree, then uh, at least one back should be of size at least two. And it's also it's easier to show that how to make all backs of size at most two, right? So and uh, it's quite natural that uh, the three width of a tree is one, right? So this is why we always uh, take minus one in the definition. That's uh, the, the main explanation why. And then the three of a graph is the minimum width of a three decomposition. Of a graph G, so I take all possible three decompositions. I compute the width of each of this decomposition, and I take the best out of them. Okay, and uh, as I said, so the tree width uh, has a lot of applications. So the most famous, perhaps, perhaps application is the application in graph minus. So tree widths play their extremely uh, important uh, role, and. Um, Parameterized algorithms, definitely. So tree widths become one of the main tools. And actually that's why I am speaking about it uh, here. And uh, um, in exact algorithms, tree widths is uh, quite common uh, in approximation algorithms, uh, kernelization. So if you speak about protrusion decomposition, it's again, it's uh, everything is tree widths based. And in many applications beyond the uh, algorithms like in databases, logic, base, and the work, AI, uh, tree widths come and uh, appearing like everywhere, everywhere. Okay. Uh, so coming back to exercise uh, about the tree-like graph, right? So you remember that uh, we have like three criteria. What could be a tree-like graph? Number of cycles is small. The removal of vertices makes a small number of vertices makes graph acyclic, or uh, graph is connected in some like tree-like way. And uh, so if you, uh, maybe it will be just a good exercise if you never ever met trivets before, just try to play and to see what 
is the trivets of these graphs. And uh, maybe just uh, to start with, just show that the trivets of each of these graphs is at most, uh, well, five for sure, right? Four maybe, or maybe even three, right? So what's that the trivets of each of these graphs is bounded by some very small constant. Okay. And the historical notes, so as I said, the trivets uh, as every useful and nice uh, thing. So the trivets was discovered and rediscovered many, many times. So uh, in graph theory, uh, the notion of trivets come back to the box of Hallin on chordal graphs. And in statistics, it's uh, Bertelet and Brioche in 1972. Uh, but uh, the trivets become famous after Robertson and Seymour pro project on graph minus. So that's uh, that's. Uh, and uh, so then it's become one of the main uh, one of the main tools in graph uh, algorithms also, and of Arlok and Proskurovsky. Yes. So the so the what makes uh, the uh, the algorithm works for trivets is the separation property that every if I take. A, any pair of nodes of a path or three decomposition, the intersection of the corresponding bugs is always a separator. And uh, this is exactly the same property we have for trees. So why is this? Uh, it's uh, probably requires a, a formal proof, but this is again, this is form of follows from the properties T2 and T3. So uh, yeah, so, and again, this is a good exercise once again, to show that if you take any two adjacent nodes in a tree decomposition, any two adjacent backs of the tree decomposition, and you take intersection of the nodes which are in this intersection, they form a separator of the graph. So you cannot go from any other node in one part of tree decomposition into any other node in the other part of the decomposition without passing at least one node of this separator. And uh, just uh, I'm trying now. I will uh, f formalize once again this uh, dynamic programming algorithm for independent set on graphs of bounded trivets. Okay, so this is the reminder of uh, what happened on trees, right? And on, on trees, I was doing dynamic programming. My goal was to determine uh, the independent set in the root, and then I just was uh, computing the value. Two values in the set uh, in, in in the in the root of the subtree uh, from the values I computed before, and uh, just I want to show that how I will do this, uh, how I will solve now weighted max independent set in times two to the k, k of polynomial of k times n on graphs of trivets at most k. Okay, so I'm just. I'm, implemented exactly the same strategy, except that uh, now for every node, oh, I also do dynamic programming. So I go from a bottom to the root and in every subtree, sub uh, now I just look, uh, I, I guess all, I enumerate all possible ways an independent set can intersect the nodes of this, uh, the vertices of this back. And then uh, uh, for each of this intersection, I compute the best independent set which can live uh, below. And I just uh, proceed with the dynamic programming. Okay, so then uh, to implement this uh, strategy, I need the notations. So I let, let's x of so if I have a node or a back of a three decomposition t, then I denote by x of t the vertices which belongs to this back, and the v of t are the vertices which are appearing in all in all backs of the subtree of three decomposition uh, rooted at node t. And then uh, instead of computing two values a and v, which I did for three, right? I compute uh, for every bug, I compute two power x of t, which is at most two power k plus one values for each bug of x of t. 
right? So this is nothing else what I'm uh, happening here. And, and then, so if I define this value for the back T and for the subset of vertices uh, of this uh, back, I define the value C of T of S at the maximum weight of an independent set of from uh, the, uh, uh, which lives uh, in the subgraph induced by V of T and which intersection with the node XT is exactly Yes, and then uh, I want to identify this value from the values of the children of this back. And uh, the useful formalization here is to formalize uh, the, for every node, uh, I, I define its type as, as one of the following four types. So it's, it could be a node which is a leaf node, and the leaf node means it, it has no children, and its size is exactly one. It can be introduced node, so it has only one child, and it's obtained from uh, its child by adding one more vertex. Forget, it's again, it's a uh, contains only one child, and, and then I uh, just uh, remove one vertex from a child, and this is the new node. And the join, so the join node, it has two children, and then uh, actually these children are identical. So this is the example of this. Uh, so in the leaf node, the introduced node, I add one more vertex to the back. In forget node, I forget one node V here. And also in join operation, I just take the, so the, the, the join node, it has exactly two, the same two children. And again, it's a fact, I don't want to prove it here, that uh, if I have a 3D composition of width K and with N nodes, then I can uh, do a, a transformation of this 3D composition. So I have, and obtain a 3D composition of width also at most K and uh, which has uh, uh, at most uh, some constant times uh, K and nodes. And uh, I, I can do it in polynomial time. And the procedure, there's no, no, no magic happening here. It's just a really straightforward procedure. You start, uh, you start modifying your nodes and you modify and modify. So the only thing you have to show that uh, you don't change the trivets and that you don't grow the, the, that the number of nodes in the new decomposition is not that big after all. Yes, and now I want to do the independent set. Uh, now I have a nice decomposition and I want to do the independent set. And again, so for the leaf nodes, uh, there's no children, the size of, uh, the, uh, the back is one, and here my computation is trivial, right? I just can see the two cases. Either the vertex belong to independent set, and then I take its weight, or it doesn't belong, and then the weight is, uh, and then the, 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 C, the, the value which I want to compute is zero. Now, for the introduced node, what happening? And it's again, it's dependent as to whether this uh, new node belongs to the set uh, or not. If it doesn't belong, then when I add a new vertex, it's uh, the value of the set S is the same, right? And uh, if uh, it belongs to the set S, then I have to, and it doesn't have any neighbors in the set S, then I have to recompute it, uh, take the weight of the vertex V. And uh, this is, uh, I, I start to speed up because it's uh, exactly the same thing here, what we did for the path decomposition, right? It's again, I'm just, uh, repeating it for the second time, exactly the same thing. So it's uh, introduce node is the same, forget node, node is the same, right? And the join node, well, it's again, so it's, uh, as, as I, I was saying, so we take what happening on the left, we take what happening on the right, and also this, the, the way the vertices of S, we counted the, them twice. So we have to detract this weight from the sum. And uh, again, so there are at most two to the k uh, plus one sub problems, the subsets of the set uh, of this of the uh, of uh, in, for every back, right? So so for every back we do uh, order of um, so sorry for every operation we do order of uh, uh, so. so to, to recompute the table for every new node, we go through the table of size two power k plus one, and every time for every update, we spend a polynomial time. And then, yes, so this gives us the 
running time of order of two to the k uh, and square. And also there are some tricks which how to reduce this update time to just polynomial of k. And then the running time of this algorithm will be two to, to, to the power k times some polynomial of k and linear in n the number of vertices in the graph. Yes, and uh, actually, so uh, there's nothing special in independent set, and um, uh, there are a lot of other problems which also can be uh, solved in a linear time on graphs of bounded trivets, and uh, yes, some names of the problems, and. Uh, uh, actually, uh, so uh, if you start doing dynamic programming, uh, so you will see at some at some point that uh, you are doing the same thing again and again. Of course, it's uh, the problems are different, but uh, and uh, the states of the dynamic programming encoding are a little bit different. But again, it, it, uh, the methodologically, it looks as again as exactly the same thing repeated many times. And actually, uh, yes, there is explanation to that, and there is a very nice uh, Coursell theorem which say that if some problem is explainable in monadic second order logic, so in some in some logic, then this problem is fixed parameter tractable parameterized by the trivets of the graph. Yes, uh, I, I leave uh, some uh, things. Uh, okay, then very fast. Uh, uh, so everything is uh, nice so far, but uh, if you really want to design the algorithm, if you want to say that some problem is uh, fixed parameter tractable parameterized by trivets, so all arguments so far I had were based that uh, the 3D composition was given. So how to compute the three decomposition? So the bad news is that the computing the, uh, deciding if the trivets of a graph is at most k is an p-complete problem. But luckily enough, uh, there are quite nice uh, FPT approximation for this problem. So basically, uh, and there is also polynomial time approximation in, of ratio lo 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 square root of logarithm of optimal. And uh, there are again there are there are several actually F different FPT approximation for the trivials. So uh, and uh, that's if you want to show that some problem is FPT parameterized by trivials, what you have to do you have to apply one of these FPT approximation algorithms and then to apply dynamic programming or to show that your problem is expressible in monadic second order logic. And uh, th that's by Coursell theorem, it's also FPT parameterized by trivies. So methodology here is uh, quite uh, established. Okay, so just uh, to conclude my first lecture, what uh, I try to communicate to you. So first of all, trivies is a very nice and it's a very systematic way of seeing algorithms uh, which are based on uh, decomposing uh, graph separators in a tree-like fashion. So, and uh, with the nice 3D compositions, it's, it's really systematic. You don't have to think a lot uh, how your separators look like as far as you have 3D composition, and you it just go. And the second thing that uh, there are a lot of problems which are fixed parameter tractable, parameterized by the trivets of the input graph. And uh, yeah. Okay, so this is, uh, that's it for today. And uh, before we go for a break and uh, uh, yes, I would be happy to answer your questions.